What's up everybody? This is Christopher the Artist here and today we're gonna make some arm guards. Let's get to it. Welcome back everybody to another episode here on the channel and today of course as we mentioned in the intro we have our arm guards that we're going to work on creating today. Uh, what you're going to need is you're going to need to print out the patterns in the description below that are for the forearm guard, the hand plate, the bicep, and the shoulders, as I have spread out here for you. They're all going to be on the right side of the, um, the arm guards itself, are on the right side. So anything that you do for the left, you're going to have to flip the template over and use that. Um, and then after you print out your patterns and cut them out, you're also going to need some EVA foam a box cutter or um, a sharp utility knife uh, or in my case what I'm going to be using is a bandsaw because I want to have some nice clean cuts I don't want to have to worry so much about sharpening blades I also like to work fast um, if you are gonna be getting a uh, lot into uh, foam making and whatnot uh, a bandsaw is definitely a worthy investment Last thing, of course, thing you'll need is some glue, and I recommend this. This is uh, Loctite Super Glue. I've used this on multitude of different projects before. Um, unlike hot glue, it uh, does not remelt. I've actually been to quite a few conventions where I've seen cosplays that are made out of foam or just made out of different materials that have been hot glued together, and it's been warm enough both outside and also in the convention center to where the glue itself remelted and then things began to fall apart. So, if you want things to stay together the first time, this stuff is the way to go. Also, this works much faster than, say, like barge cement. Not that barge is a bad material, it's just it lets off fumes and it also, also takes a while to dry, about, you know, 15 minutes or so. 10 to uh, 5 to 15 minutes, depending on the humidity. Um, I don't like that because, like I said, I like to work fast. This stuff sets in like five seconds. So, really good stuff, and it's like five to seven bucks a bottle. Seven at the heights. I've seen it, you know, but I've seen like five dollars at like the hardware store or anything like that. So, that's what you're going to need, and we're going to get started, and I think this is the point where we're going to do some time lapse, and I'm going to do some voiceover throughout the entire process. Here we go. Hello everyone, just wanted to talk to you down here while we're working on tracing out the patterns onto the foam. Um, I've gotten several questions about the patterns themselves. The patterns uh, per each video are going to be down in the links in the description below, uh, either in a Dropbox format or from my Google Drive shared for you all shared publicly. Uh, the patterns themselves are made off of a kit from Imperial Surplus. They are made off of the arc, or the um, the animated style of Clone Trooper. And uh, there's a couple things going on with the patterns. First off is that in their current state, they are not 501st approved, um, or at least I don't know if they are. Um, I did not spend nearly as much time as a lot of other people who have done scratch builds of Clone Troopers before. Um, mainly because this is a custom build, like I said before, in the overview video several episodes back. But I also uh, wanted to just share what I got with the world and everything. And uh, these are some foam patterns for this kit. Uh, and you'll be able to follow along as you will. Like I said, if you wanted to do 501st approved, there's no restriction necessarily from what I've heard that disallows the usage of foam uh, but I do know that because of their stringency on screen accuracy uh, foam may not be the correct material or the right material to use for this kind of project if you're planning to use you, this project for the 501st uh, you might something you might you might find something more advantageous along the lines of say, uh, styrene, which is a modeler's plastic. I've seen a particular YouTuber before use this plastic for his realistic kit and he got into the 501st, but he spent months and months of planning and researching and prototyping and 
kind of just a bunch of different things that made his kit approvable, basically. Uh, he wanted to do the scratch build and he put in the time and effort to do it. If you want to check out his links uh, or his channel, his name is Sergio Solo. Um, he's from Colombia, if I remember correctly, and uh, he did a fantastic Commander Bly build, which was absolutely amazing. Furthermore, these patterns that I'm giving out to you basically are provided for free of charge, no additional pricing, no nothing, it's absolutely free. Uh, that being said, I did spend a pretty good chunk of time not only making these patterns off of the kit, but also modifying them heavily in order to make sure that they work with foam and other materials. Um, if you feel so obliged to do so, I will have my PayPal down in the description below for a donation or whatever that you can contribute. Or you can also follow me on my Patreon. Be sure to check that out, definitely. Um, I have a good Patreon army uh, kind of beginning to grow, and um, I, there's going to be a bunch of exclusive access to both behind the scenes content. Uh, various live streams I plan to do at some point, as well as a, another cosplay tutorial series, which is kind of more of a walkthrough versus a tutorial, given that this is the first time I'm doing this. It is going to be a Darth Vader build, which I'm fairly excited. Um, so we will see how that goes. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for watching this disclaimer, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video, as well as the rest of the series. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we are pretty much just finishing up the tracing of the arm guards here. We're currently working on the uh, the forearm section of the guard itself. All these pieces, like I said in the beginning of the video, are for the right side, and you want to make sure that you are uh, labeling these pretty much as much as possible, because uh, even for someone like me, uh, it does get kind of confusing with all these pieces to keep track of. Uh, so that part is pretty much finished, and now we're just cutting out the sections, and I'm starting because I'm using a bandsaw. I'm pretty much just reducing the size of the pieces in terms of the foam that it's on, such that I can be able to cut them out on the bandsaw with relative ease. Uh, so that uh, is pretty much there. Um, you're going to need a couple of sheets to do the entirety of the arm guards itself. I think I used approximately about three or so sheets of uh, EVA foam. Now, the foam in particular is the kind of the standard uh, floor mat style foam. It's about um, no more than half an inch or so. Half an inch actually might be a little bit generous. But as you can see, I'm going ahead and using it on the bandsaw now. I got the uh, the skill bandsaw, of which if you're wanting to go ahead and look it up in the description below, it's actually a fairly inexpensive bandsaw. Um, I think it, I got it as a gift from uh, as a wedding present and everything. But I want to say this ran me or this ran about a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars or so. Um, I found it off of Amazon, so it's a pretty, pretty, pretty decent little saw. And um, I'm not necessarily wearing all the necessary safety protection, but you definitely should be wearing goggles. And of course, as you can see off on the side, I am wearing a, uh, a respirator mask. Now, I do have another respirator mask for later videos. Um, and uh, it's just to make sure that uh, I'm not breathing in any particles. Now, note with a bandsaw that there is... Um, a thing in that you should really only use this saw for straight cuts or straight line cuts. Um, you can see that I'm using it for gradual uh, curves. I'm going, I know it's sped up, but I am going fairly slow such that I'm not bending the blade in any in one particular direction too much. Um, these corners and everything, I'm kind of just slowly but surely, you know, cutting out material and making sure that I am not damaging the equipment in any such way. Um, what really helps in this case is also, of course, using those registration marks. I have them uh, all together in one in, in place, and uh, those pieces are pretty good. But with regards to the bandsaw, this is definitely the way to go, especially if you're going to be working in volumes of EVA foam like I plan on doing. 
So, uh, this is a pretty decent little tool. The, the edges themselves are really, really nice and uh, straight, as well as fairly clean. I don't have any um, cleanup work that I need to do if I were to use a uh, utility knife and say it was, you know, somewhat dull. I don't have any of that, uh, those kind of burrs that can get on the pieces themselves. Now, as you can see, I am kind of bending the foam kind of underneath as I'm working on this piece, particularly one of the shoulder uh, sections. Um, having a bandsaw that has a wider C cutout, uh, which is essentially the, uh, the, the section in which it's kind of open, uh, you know, that's kind of off to the side of the table there. Uh, having one that's wider is always beneficial. Now we're going to go ahead and begin to work on the assemblage of the foam pieces. And we're starting by the hand plate here, and I'm just cutting out a trench on the underneath side. I'm not going all the way through the hand plate itself, but I am going about, you know, halfway down basically. And uh, I'm heating it up at this point with a proper heat gun. Do not use a hair dryer. It does not work that well. And then just go ahead and apply some super glue there, use a scrap piece of foam and seal it in. Now we're working on the top section of the elbow piece, curling it around using the uh, heat foam or the heat gun and simply gluing it in place and lining up the edges like a so and it dries fairly quickly. The same with the bicep here, we're just heating it up as such, sealing all those crevices in and then we're just wrapping it around and making sure that all the pieces are um, curved properly and then super gluing it together and it works fairly quickly like so yet again and then we're working on the pieces here now it may be a bit of a tight fit but I definitely just suggest to take your time and I'm going ahead and I'm working on gluing a small section of EVA of these EVA foam sections at a time and I'm doing the top and bottom to make sure that all my edges are correct and then I'm focusing on the middle and it will, I mean, EVA foam will fight a little bit, but ultimately, if you stay patient enough, you will win. Uh, just be sure to just keep with it. I continue this method all the way around the arm guard itself. There is a little bit of maybe some splitting, but that is okay. I do plan on sealing all of these crevices on all the armor pieces with Kawiki Seal, just to make sure that all my edges are clean and I have no seams that will show. Um, I'm just repeating this step for the last part and then we're going to go ahead in here in just a second and wrap the entire section around such that part one meets with part four. Um, and it's the same method as before and you're just going to go down the line. Until you get a product like so. Now, as you can see, the seams do kind of show a little bit, but that's okay. Next is to line up the elbow section with the forearm section. As you can see, the seam there with the, uh, the seams there, and also follow the registration marks, and it will match up like so. And work section by section, work a little bit at a time. And I'm also using the foam piece, like I said before, like right there, to kind of just clean up any spill out, you know, just to make sure that my seams are all nice and clean as possible. I am going to go over these again, like I said before, with some sealant, but these will definitely uh, do the better job I can. Now we're going to go ahead and put the elbow in. We're just going to curve it around, and the elbow itself is actually inset into the top portion of the foam there. And I'm going to kind of just focus on the corners first, getting them in there, and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap the sections around like a so. And as you can see there, it's offset from the edge just a little bit. And that kind of gives it a little bit more of a 3D look than a flat look. Next is the shoulder bell here. It's best to heat it up like I am doing so right here. And it doesn't really matter what section you focus on first. You're going to go ahead and glue them all into place, focusing on the tips first, and then working on the edges all the way through. Now, as you can see, what I did just there, I'm actually going to do here again. I made sure that I flipped it kind of on the inside out such that all of that seam, all of that glue and whatnot seals in place. And that creates a nice tight bond. And it actually reduces the amount of seam ripping, so to speak.
Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and heat form it yet again, just to make sure that it gets into the proper shape and it looks pretty awesome. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gentle peeps. That is pretty much the video. Uh, next bits that you'll need to worry about, basically, is just sealing up the, ins uh, the insides, cleaning up the edges, and making sure that they are all rounded off. But you basically have, after you've completed um, both parts, um, or at least the, uh, the construction of one arm, you can do the other arm, and you'll have some pretty sweet setups, basically, as far as your arm guards. Now obviously there's some placement and whatnot that I need to do as far as strapping and whatnot goes, but that's pretty good. It's very lightweight, very good range of motion. Depending on your size and whatnot, you may need to adjust the patterns, uh, but it's pretty much all set to go. Um, so very exciting, very good first steps after of course the helmet. Um, and then next episode hopefully we'll be working on either the chest or possibly the legs. I haven't decided which, but you'll see in the next episode. Thank you all for watching everybody, and may the force be with you, always.